start with a financial review for um, the overview from FY19. Starts yep. with the balance Starts sheet. With the balance yes. Okay. Uh, so questions. I was going to say I can give kind of summarize what you're seeing here if you want. The first page is the balance sheet that delineates the different cash accounts. Um, I think it was last year. It might have been the year before. Uh, it was requested that even though the fire department keeps their books on a cash basis, to um, put the loan any outstanding loan balances on there. So that's what the the 154 is the um, the loan on the pumper and the balance at the end of the fiscal year. But that's not in, in accordance with cash basis that doesn't belong there, but it's there just because it was requested that it be there. Is that um, the only loan? That's the only loan the okay. other, that's outstanding, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the next two pages is the profit and loss by class. So the first column is the ambulance second column is the fire department, and then the total. So that's giving you the overall view. And then there's one page, uh, which is the budget to actual of the ambulance, which I think the profit and loss by class is interesting, but the budget to actual really gives you, you know, what was planned, what actually happened. It gives you the better picture of each of the two different classes. So you've got the ambulance, and then the next two pages are the fire department. And you can see the variances on those reports. So that's kind of the summary of what's here. Any questions or comments? So this is the fiscal year, it looks like. Correct. Yes. Year, yep. Yeah, year. This is the fiscal year. So you transferred into the contingency. It's a member of the East Coast. So I think we just swiped his financial piece. There's another set book right here. Right here? Yeah. yeah. No. I just gave him mine. Because <coughs> I brought one. You gave him the pictures, too? Oh, the picture. The picture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, good? Uh, yes. Yeah. The 17000 was the total transferred into the contingency um, at the end of the fiscal year. Well, it's done each, the month after each month closes, basically. So as the ambulance revenues come in mm -hmm. um, and the direct ambulance expenses are, come out, uh, the select, the, the board votes on the transfers to contingency or capital mm -hmm. based on what the balance in the contingency account is and the formula that's agreed to in well, the agreement. <laughs> <coughs> so that's offset by the 14000 that went out, went out to pay for the <coughs> ambulance engine. Yeah, because I see the contingency is up, so we're actually right. putting lights on. Any other questions? Um, so on the net ordinary income on the ambulance, so you're negative the ten thousand, right? Right. So that's because we carried over that reserve fund from last year's. Remember, we we changed from annual to quarterly, and there was a ten thousand. That's on the insurance. That that was from the insurance. So that reserve money we put towards the. Um, um, Ambulance salary, you can see yeah. the exact line number there on your salary from so reserves. So if yeah. you look at the from expense reserves, on yeah. salary, ten thousand, right? Right. So that essentially that doesn't show. Oh, I see. That right. doesn't show as cash above because it's a reserve and it's not in the, it's not on income. So essentially, no matter what we did, we would be ten thousand behind because we didn't have that in there. So we applied it from the reserve rather than from the income. Okay. That's clear as well. 
<laughs> if, if you look at the, um, the budget to I actual, see it's the same figure. <laughs> yeah, it's the same figure. So yeah. we right. put that line in for salary. Said, okay, we'll take the ten thousand we had left over yeah, from yeah. the year before. Right. We'll apply it right. to the salary line. Got it. But the problem is, it doesn't show in in the income above. Yes. And so, therefore, it's always going to be a deficit. Yeah. Because it will never show up because the income didn't come in. It didn't come in as income. It's from the reserves. Right. It's from yes. the reserves. So yeah. that, that. So even but though you, it's ten there, it's paid. Yeah. Right. So, but you didn't end in the negative. We did. The, the ten thousand. No, the ten thousand is not a negative. It's just the expenses versus the income. If you look up above. Yeah. Yeah. Under Got it. transfer from contingency to operations, that's the overage that we had to pay out of our contingency. $8,000 $8, to cover our over expenditures in the ambulance side. And if you look in fire, it's 9000 Yeah. to a total of 18000 Yeah. from contingency to operating. This is just a, a general question mm -hmm. for Don more than anybody. Right. Why couldn't the reserve use be shown as an income item so that it zeroed out? Lay, lay the, it, it, it has, so I need a balanced entry in order to, so if I recognize it as income, that's a credit, to yeah. talk my language, and I need a corresponding debit. If I, the only place to hit is your equity at the beginning of the year. So if I credit your income and I debit your equity, then when we put the side-by-sides, your equity doesn't trace from one year to the next. So it's, which is much more problematic for me. <laughs> but the, may, may, might well, make more sense for you. The problem comes back to the fact that this is easy to do when we're sitting here and right. you or Toby are here to say something. Yep. But when you're doing this in a vacuum, right. these don't make sense. So the one thing I will say is on the budget to actual for ambulance, you'll see that the 10,000 is a budgeted deficit. And so that's because you're using your already existing yeah. reserves. No, I get it. I just, it's it, already been income somewhere else. You, it right. can't be income twice. But if you go it's, back and look at this later or try to explain it to somebody, it's like. Yeah, it's, I mean, it. the point, the, the basic is you budget, they budgeted a $10,000 deficit and they're showing a ten thousand dollar deficit on the ambulance. So, well, which it's if covered you covered by a reserve ten thousand right. they had from the because the insurance payment changed from an annual payment to a quarterly payment, so they had that money carried over. And it's it's not revenue. It's just an accounting. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, revenue. It's, it's an accounting right. thing, really. Right. Yeah. Definitely that's, not that's why it doesn't make any sense. I, right. I think so that's... You, so if you look on the page, it's for your page number four, budget versus actual ambulance. And you start at the top and it says budget, and you go down there. So we had a budget of 318000 And then if you look at the bottom, the total expense in the budget was three twenty nine. So essentially right there, there is the $10,000 deficit right. that we budgeted in the year. So it's on page four, mm -hmm. the second column, and page at the bottom of the four. second yeah. column, it well, says... Well, it's not labeled page four. four. It's the fourth oh, page. Oh, it's not labeled page four. four. Yeah. Oh, that's so clear. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> count it. <laughs> count four Sorry. pages. The, the one I sent you had the numbers. I didn't okay, have yes. Copy, so. But I didn't translate that over to this. So Sorry. budget versus actual. Mm -hmm. Second mm -hmm. column under budget. If you look at the bottom line, it says minus 10,830. Right. Fifty-six cents. That's where it shows up. That's the budgeted deficit. So we made a budget that was not really supported. Right. So that's where it shows up. And again, we're following Layla's oh. information. The the problem remains that our budget, which is the one that we were voting off of, is not this budget. It didn't have a deficit. Right. So again, when the treasurer is trying to make sense of this, he can't well, I'll sit without down. having that inside information. Well, I'll sit down with him then. Yeah. Let him know. No. Okay. So we go back to page one, which is actually page one. <laughs> That's the page balance sheet. one. Yeah. Balance sheet, your first page. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Doesn't matter what it says in the plot. That's right. <laughs> 
first page of your packet. Okay. That's the balance sheet. So yes. we're good on that. Yeah. The second page is profit and loss by class. Yeah. Got it. And that shows everything that came in and went out. Yeah. And all the totals throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't show whether we made our budget estimates or not. So then. Well, I, I assume you didn't if you transfer money to contingency. Right. So we were over budget in both. Right. Right. So exactly. This, this 18000 Right. Dispatching was over by $10,000. Right. And the reason for that was we didn't get the bill for last year's last payment until after July 1st. So there's actually five payments of dispatch this year as opposed to the four that we normally get. That's why dispatch is over. And so you got one, you got, got a fifth one you before fifth. the end of the fiscal year. Right. Well, yeah. it, came, it should have been there before June 30, and it came after that, so we paid the it. The year before. It. Yeah, it was yeah. last the year before. So. Yeah, the year before. And bookkeeping is over by two million. Right. And the bookkeeping is because we've had Layla in here to help us develop this QuickBooks report so that you guys can actually have consistent numbers month to month. So essentially, the reports are generated from QuickBooks, and we, you know, we we can't fudge them or screw them up like we had before. Oh, you did? Well, every time we tried to make the numbers work, they never lined up, so. Same, right. And insurance, insurance is over like 25 From 37 to well, No, this is ambulance, this is fire, this is the total. The ambulance oh, no, right. with okay, the, gotcha. So the budget is the second to the last page. Right, because we don't know what comparing really. So when you're looking at profit and loss, it just gives you the totals. It doesn't tell you what had been right. budgeted. You have to go to budget this versus this actual. This is the actual budget. Profit and loss budget versus actual. Right. That shows you what you budgeted and what, exactly. what's over and what's under. Correct. Yeah. Still, some of the estimates are confusing. There, there was an insurance increase. Yeah. <coughs> so firefighting supplies two hundred and thirty one percent. I was say you had for firefighting supplies you had uh, can't remember now what those were, but I know we talked about those being over budget. Probably that was the SCBA. Um. There, there was uh, two deck ground monitors for deck guns. Um, so what? There's ground monitors. They're, they're, they, they're like deck guns on top of our truck. They're large su water supply deck guns for oh, that you deck can guns. That you set up. You, you set them up on the ground for fire suppression purposes. Wow. <clears throat> To close those blind, blinds, please. What's that? You want to close the blinds? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing in here. Is there any way to turn it down? I'll shut this. I'll have to shut it right off. <clears throat> Thanks, Stuart. That's it. Thank you. you were, we were doing you the Inquisition, you know. <laughs> it was very effective. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like not to. <laughs> Any other questions on uh, budget overview issue F one nineteen? I'm going to give you another dumb question. It's on the the last page. Um, I assume that's the last page. Page six. Page um, two on the packet. What's the title on the top of it? <laughs> it's the uh, profit and loss budget versus actual fire. Okay. And you're into capital activity. His eyes went straight to that unbudgeted holiday baskets. Yeah, I was just looking at that. What is that? That's okay. money you get in. Right? That's mm -hmm. what it costs us to provide 12 it's families at Thanksgiving and 14 families at Christmas with food and presents. It was, it was uh, 20 families. So it was 35 kids this year at Christmas time. Wow. So his question wasn't 
<clears throat> on the the purpose, yeah. but the fact that it's in capital activity. Obviously, it's not a capital cost. Uh, there ended up not being enough donation revenue to support the whole thing. So why would that not be an unbudgeted expense and come out of contingency? We can do that if it's, yeah. Like, I mean, the money. I mean, it's not a capital expense. Understood. That's all. Right. Uh, that's where he was coming from. Right. Yeah, I mean, we can just reclassify it so it's um, contingency expense. <coughs> Um, bottom line, it comes from the same insurance revenue as far as the funding. Boy, is that a slippery slope. <laughs> so the um, capital expense trucks, is that the payment yeah. you make? For the SB2. Yeah. yeah. That's the annual expense. Yeah. You know Don's personal opinion is all this stuff ought to be showing in the budget. Even if it's an unbudgeted expense. It should be showing above the line, not in one of the special categories. And that one just caused him to run a little harder. Uh, you'll be getting a phone call. <laughs> yeah. Well, however you guys want to handle it. I mean, essentially, we provide that service, and we're trying to find a way to pay for it. And donations don't cover it. Uh, the alternative S is not to do it. Or the alternative is to budget for it which would be the more accurate. We can certainly do that in the future if that's, yeah. but again, that goes to the taxpayers. The town's 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 well, it's, it goes to the taxpayers no matter what, right. so it's better to be honest up front than to hide it as a capital expense. Okay. Well, this Obviously, is, the boards did not agree to pay $10,000 for holiday baskets, right. and that's a fair, Thing that should have been in front of mm -hmm. But it didn't cost the taxpayers. It came from ambulance revenue. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> so I mean, if the town, but if the towns are saying, if the towns are saying they want to support this as a budget item, otherwise we're we're looking at the possibility we may not be able to do it if we're not going to be able to create enough revenue anymore for from donations. I think the idea is we just want to have everything right up front so we can see. Right, but if you guys want a program like that to be put into the budget, you have to let us know that information. Because it was never a budgeted item. It was always a, an accessory item done through donations that have been supported mm -hmm. through community projects. So it wasn't anything that had to be covered. So, you, so all the other years that this was done, there was never a, a need to take money. It was always, there was always It came from donations. donations either came in specifically through that or donations that came in otherwise for the fire department from different events that occurred through the year. Okay, so this is the first time this ever happened. That's correct. And the size of it almost doubled at Christmas time. And I think what Don or Bruce Lee Don are saying is that this is contingency expense, not capital expense. Right, and we can recode that. That's fine. It's not a problem. Yeah. But I think two different. But it's, two it would different be better to know up front for the boards that we're going to make this expense right. than to have it come out of contingency. It certainly shouldn't come out of capital. I guess we need to know what your guys' pleasure is on that. If you want us to put it as a, a budget item. I'd say so. It comes out of, yeah, it has to be in the budget. It should be in the budget. It should be in the budget, because how else? No question. Right, it, yeah. But well, well it's in, an the in the past, in the past, it wasn't because of the donation right, amount covered it. Right. that we, as a fire department, received would handle it. This right. is the first time that this has grown to this status. Right. So yeah. we will fix this to a contingency instead of a capital expense. And if you want, in the future, we will put a line item in the budget that says yeah. "holiday baskets," and we'll put a ballpark figure yeah. in there. And if fair enough. You know, and, and then, and then, if we want to stand up and be Scrooge and cut it out of the budget, we can. Good for you but guys. We, but we know what we're doing. Well, and right. again, so this just happened. So we, you know, we couldn't have predicted this. We that's couldn't right. put it in. Right. This is an experiential yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, yeah. therefore, mm -hmm. we hear your message, and we'll certainly put, put it in the as budget. a line item in the future. And yeah. then, when you get the donations in, well, they can offset that line item. Yeah, we're fine with that. 
Yeah. You, wanted, you wanted to say something, Carl? No, I was just going to bring up the point that Toby just made. That it was not an expected expense. expense. Right. So they couldn't have budgeted for it. Right, but we can now. Yes. But they could have chosen not to do it. Yes. Right. And that's, that's really the board's choice mm -hmm. for these kind of expenses, not the fire department's choice. I understand. So. But yeah. I think we have to acknowledge that something changed in this go round, and we're going to fix it. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Makes What's sense. What's the next me. question on that? That's the last question on that page, but that's the last page. That's the last page. We skipped the last page. John, have any more questions for us? Or comments? The, the comment is the general one I gave Toby. He's going to get a call. Uh, because again, there's a couple of things. The holiday baskets are the best example. He continues to push for the things to be above the line and not be down below. So you don't want to clean up stuff that happened during the year you want a budget below the line. You want it in the budget mm -hmm. showing in the... Right, in as much as you possibly box. can, right. So what were the uh, other categories that pushed the budget up over they had to use a contingency fund. The dispatch service, right, was one thing. That was up. pretty much the total fire department overage was. Was the 9,000? It was like 8,900 or whatever one thing. Right, so that pretty much takes pretty care much of that. Pretty much that did it, right. Um, but on the flip side of that, you only get three bills for the next year. No. No, no you get. You still three get four. bills in the You get four, you got three year. years, of, yeah, three before that. <coughs> we right. get three well, years before. Right. Well, that's all right. On the ambulance, it was over, right? Eight or nine thousand. Right, and I, uh, the, I just did a quick look at one of the line items, the office computer and software, and there are a couple of miss um, appropriate charges that ended up in there. One was for a medical device, um, for almost a thousand bucks that should have been in a different line item. So, and there was another one for five hundred dollars that just were miscalculated. So that line should not be over more than about a thousand dollars. It's eighty six hundred right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then training was up a lot. Right. So we have a couple of couple of three people taking EMT training, so it was like yeah. twenty five hundred dollars. Right. And we did yeah, several we did, large scale plan. trainings here. We did several large scale trainings here as well. Right. And we do, we do trainings it's on site. And that cost you guys money to do training? Yeah, we had to hire a couple of instructors to come in to do it. And vehicle repair is the engine, the motor, and no, that's, that's the motor just, is in capital. The motor went to capital and moved right. it over there. And that's just regular service without including the motor. And so it's profit, profit, and lost budget versus actual ambulance uh, vehicle repair is seven thousand. Right. So those are that's in the ambulance. That's just on the ambulance budget. Five hundred ninety-one percent of budget. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a different line, Gene. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's the training line. It's training 179. Line. Yeah, the training line was the 591. The vehicle repair is the 179. Right, right. right. Vehicle repair, yeah. Sorry. Well, that's not that big a figure, really. Those are vehicles. That's just for two ambulances? That's yeah, just two ambulances. That was probably off the year before, the 4,000. Changes from year to year? Yeah, yeah, I know. You've probably explained this before, but since I don't eat, live, and breathe this like you guys do, what is the salary other? Is that, that's just regular? Right. So, so why does it say other? Um, there's the 40,000 that was covered from Marshfield. Yeah. There's the 10,830 that was covered from reserves. Mm -hmm. And then there's everything else, basically. So it just is the way that QuickBooks presents it. Um, it's the but it's the regular salary. That's that's the way it's done. Which page are you looking at? I'm looking at page. Well, the ambulance. Profit, 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 profit and loss. Profit and loss budget versus, versus actual ambulance. Oh, okay, I'm on the same page. Got it. About. Are oh, you looking at the salary? Halfway, okay, I got it. Yeah, halfway down. Yep.
but essentially the line item in the budget that you guys approved is the 180,000 in, in which we hit 182,000 mm -hmm. for that line item. So yeah. essentially so it was over, pretty close. Over, yeah. Just by $2,000. Yeah. I mean, but on that. Yeah. Close to time. Yeah. I mean, budgets, they're hard. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a guess. It's a best guess estimate of what you're going to spend. I mean, the vehicle repairs for the fire department was down by 4,000. So, you know, one is kind of a wash of the Yeah. Other. Well, you move a newer vehicle in on the fire side, and you have older vehicles falling apart on the ambulance side. So. Well, it's just more maintenance. It's not safe falling apart. That's negative conversation. Well, if you want to ask <laughs> one of our patients, more maintenance on the older vehicles. if you want to ask one of our patients about why the door opened up while we were driving, we were driving into the hospital. I'll talk about. Do you need some apart. WD-40 on it? It's called the bungee cord. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's not good. Okay, so. Uh, what other questions do we have on this? Mm -hmm. Is there questions on the overview side? Bruce, can you have Don put his questions into written format for us? You don't want that. It'll be longer than this. That's okay. It might be okay. Then yeah. you got to decide whether it's coming to you or going through Toby. Well, can, that's how he does it now. Toby, but Toby. then when we hand them off written to Layla, she's able to read them and see them as well. Be interesting to see Don's questions. Okay, ambulance revenue, FY19. How long? That's a different, different page, right? right so, um, oh, page seven. It would be I can just the collection. That's really FY20. Okay, 83, almost 84% collection, that's good. Is that the one I think so. Ambulance billing, historic collection, right? Is that it? So it looks like. Can you on the right page? Mm -hmm. So um, this is a report that we get from our billing agent, um, and essentially we report to her what the, what the income is. Sometimes we get deposits in the bank that she doesn't see. Um, so there's a little bit of this, a discrepancy between what shows up on the, on the financials versus this number. So essentially this is 136, 837 that we collected. Okay, you look at the last column. The last column, that's, that's the total monies that we collect according to the billing clerk, yep. her number. So if you go back to insurance revenue <coughs> on the budget versus actual, it's 140000 So that $4,000 is a couple of payments that came in after she closed her books on the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the money ended up in our bank account before the end of the year, but not reported to her. So that's why there's a discrepancy. That's why it's not in here, but it's in here. Well, no, that's why there's two different numbers. Because she she closed her books. And she didn't get the last two payments. So Where's the 140 that you're talking about? It's, it's back in it's the... Oh, on okay. The, it's, it's not on the sheet. It's, it's back here on the insurance revenue. Got it. So, so that so obviously is another Don and issue. Right. And right. that's another part of that phone call he's, he's right. got for you. Right. So, okay. the, so there were essentially a couple of payments on the 27th and 28th that didn't get through to the billing clerk. For her to <coughs> process them on her side. So this information comes from the billing clerk, who go, you know, who essentially sees the discounts and sees the re the receipts. Is that a, a company or no? It's a uh, person that works in Barry City Fire. Yeah. A Barry, I thought it was Barry City Fire Department. So w another dumb question was, when these numbers aren't lined up, does this number become next year's this number? Does it become I the think, number that I shows the I think because of a year? couple of days overlap that they're never going to quite line up because 
I would have to. No, you, you didn't have understand. To. Is, is it this number or this number that's going to get carried into this chart next year? I just, it, this gets carried into the chart. So, so okay, so it'll stay the same. It'll, it'll the same. still be off. Yeah, I, yeah, this is her report. Yeah. And I keep it consistent. Yeah. I just want to make sure you see the discrepancy between the financials yeah. versus the, the billing side. So and that's all reconciles your audit. He's still not going to be able to use this. This will never line up. Right. Okay. It's it's really just to show you how the collection rate is yeah. is proceeding. And and that was just a question. No, that's no. not a comment. No, okay. So it looks like you bill a lot more than you ever had before. Two hundred forty thousand the year before. One sixty-seven. I mean, you've never been up to two hundred thousand. Correct. So you build a lot. Collected a little bit more. Correct. That's it. It's all about how many times we went out, and that's you'll come to that in the next report. Yeah. Or you know, our. Uh, it's just the ratio yeah. has gotten worse, but I mean, you're hundred thousand dollars <coughs> under. We'll also notice that there's seventy-seven thousand dollars of adjustments. Yeah, that's huge. And a lot of that. That's a huge number. A lot of that relates to the last two columns is. Medicaid. 29 and 9.7, that's over 30% of what we do. We only collect less than 50% of yep. what we go. On the Medicare, Medicaid. The Medicare, Medicaid. Medicaid. Yeah, and that part of it. Right. So the higher that number, those numbers percentage-wise are over here, the less we collect. Yeah. <clears throat> and we have no control over who gets sick. So that percentage at 29.8, is that the amount of carries that were Medicare? transports that were Medicare patients. Okay, so that was almost a third Correct. of the patients that you carried were Medicare. And right. then you also had almost so 10% So 29 and 9.7 is almost 40%. 40% mm -hmm. of what we do, we can only collect. 50%. Or whatever the ratio is. Whatever the ratio is, right. Medicaid's less. is even less than Medicare as far as what we can collect. That's a pretty high ratio. ratio. Almost 40%. We're dealing with elderly population. That's yeah. where we go to our, our medical events. So yeah. we have no control over that. No, no, I know. Yeah. I'm not saying you have any control. I'm just and I'm sure every patient. other ambulance service is dealing with the exact same, same issue. Yeah. It's in Vermont. Um, well, yeah, Medicare, anyway, Medicare, 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 Medicaid is, is a set rate no matter where you're No, yeah, I know that. Patient. I was just thinking of the percentage of Medicare and Medicaid <coughs> patients right. versus younger patients or whatever. Vermont high. Mm -hmm. I'm a Medicare patient if you take me. <laughs> yeah, I just, wow, that's just a big figure. It is a big figure. 40%. Right. Wow. Get rid of the legislatures. Yeah. We'll get them out to lobby. There's a big push right now to try to make adjustments to the Medicare Medicaid adjustments. And it's all set you by only do that through legislature? It's all set through federal government. Well, Medicaid is. Medicare is set through the federals. But the Medicaid portion is determined by the state. Huh. Which usually piggybacks off your, your federal. So. Huh. so that's the collection rate. That's um, specific to the law, though, right? I mean, you have to change the law, looks like. Yeah, they have to change the rate that they provide services with. And it's, you know, it's structured through medical yeah, yeah. oversight. Right. So any questions on the FY19 budget revenues, or ambulance revenues? Any questions? So there were a lot more carries, must be. I guess we'll see that. Yeah, we'll see that down towards the bottom a lot, but call load run. Um, any questions on the updated, the budget updates for FY20 from where we are currently? There's not much into there we're only in the one month. We're doing really well right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for your checks. You have the updated capital plan. Any discussions on the capital plan? Where is that capital plan? Did, did you send it? Send I, it I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, we didn't see that. Yeah, no, I that was your question. That. What? We've got the one from January. Yeah. Oh, we did. Where is it? I've got the one from January. Yeah. <laughs> I probably would be. I don't have it. I, don't I can make copies of that one. It's the same one I brought to you guys in March. Uh, in May. It's the same right. numbers. So I didn't keep it from me. Well, here. <laughs> I think he's going to go for it.
We should have yeah. coffee today. Mm -hmm. We can just take coffee to Ellen right there if you want to make them. Mm. What did, isn't that what he's doing? Yeah. Was that with our minutes from last Oh, it's from that whiteboard presentation. Yeah. We should make that. Okay. I can make it. Okay. Understood. I must have it. Yeah. So this is not, um, that's the estimated revenue for 2019. This was approved in January. So that that's way early in the Yes. But I'm just wondering if we hit that if we hit the target of 115. What's that? So on the estimated yearly revenue. For FY nineteen? Yes. Yeah, if you go back to your yes. your other sheet. Right, it should be in there. Not this one. April 11th. So the FY 2019 total receipts was the uh, amount received 136,837. Okay, but but you take out the some expenses out of that. Right? We do. Yeah. Right. But yeah, what was so that? What was that contribution? The, the what was the expenses? Oh, okay. So that's a gross revenue. That 115. Not minus those expenses you take off the top. Right. So if you yeah, so if you okay. look at so, so you, you're well you, you collect is one thirty six. Yeah. And then if you go back to your other budget sheet, it will tell you what your expenses were. Mm -hmm. It's back on page three. Profit and loss by like class. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Down in the bottom of the ambulance it says unbudgeted defib loan, you're a budgeted the ambulance billing, unbudgeted paramedic. Yes. And then the patient overpay for twenty four thousand nine. Oh, so those are expenses of twenty four thousand? Correct. That was taken off the top. Says okay, so insurance. the figure of the 115, that doesn't figure it's taking anything. That's, a, that's an estimated number that's based gross. on annual, right? Gross, okay. Right. Okay. 24,000. 24,000. So, so you did pretty well. Yeah. It looks like. So, um, I mean, relatively speaking, speaking, yeah. The yeah. Capital you know, 136 yeah. versus 115 right. was your budget. I mean, we've never collected more than, you know, that's what, what we are for collected. ratios and, yeah. right. But versus your budget, you did well. Right. As far as the income goes. Because like those are like your paramedic expense, your yeah. you know the defib loan. We know what that is, but your yeah. your billing and your paramedic expenses yeah. are a moving target. We don't know what those are from month to month. No. So that was twenty four versus the one thirty six. If it comes out of there, you get one hundred twelve. Yeah. Don't so go. That, don't go by don't those go numbers. Go by these numbers. And that. that's that page three. Well, okay, got it. Yep. And. This the bottom line capital number is much better than it has been in the past. Well, what was contributed to capital? Right, and yeah, it's well above the ex expectation. Right, because they're way above the twenty thousand dollars above the what they got to take out. Yeah. If I did one fifteen, it's just a one thirty six. So the contribution to capital is in the middle. That's what I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> so that's they got that. Take okay. one pass it along. Yes, sir. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> I've got my own. <laughs> All right. Ready now? So, did you want to go over the capital plan? Mm -hmm. um, now we all have, we're all on yeah. the same page. Yep. One page on. <laughs> No pages. Uh, so these are all the vehicles that we own. Yeah. Uh, total replacement cost of over two million dollars. The current use cost is nine hundred and ninety thousand of the vehicles that we have sitting out there in the garage and up on the hill. Uh, we are currently paying a loan on Rescue Two fifty three thousand a year, and we were looking to replace uh, Rescue Four. 2020, which is coming up. 
We mm -hmm. just finished paying off the SCBA loan of $14,900. Which one again, Toby? Rescue 2, you're looking to replace? No, four. Rescue 4, the rescue ambulance. Four. The one that we just blew the motor. Right. Next year in 2021. But you put in the motor now. Mm -hmm. We did. But when I look at current age, it says six. Is that right. Right from six years old? So you want to replace it in the next fiscal year at seven years old, right? But understand that it, it's a it's a two part vehicle. It has a 1999 body on it and a 2012 chassis. So what we repair almost all the time is the body, over and over and over and over again. I thought that was the one you referred to. Well. We took the body off a used ambulance that we got from Montpelier, and yeah. that was 19, a 1999 truck. We had a refurb. But and that was already mounted on there. That, that, that box is 25 years old, 26 years old. But wasn't that one you had refurbed and waved to? One of you did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's constantly falling apart. That's why the ambulance repair bill was so high and continues to be high. So. Is that the one where the door came off? The it's going to be expensive, wasn't it? It, 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 was, it was 100000 To refurb it? It was 110000 I think, to do the whole project. That, that, included, included, that included buying the chassis, yeah. switching the box over. So in terms of what actually was refurbed on the box, <coughs> there was not much refurbed on the box. That box is the original condition. The chassis is the one you bought in Pennsylvania or something? No. Or where did that chassis come from? Um, Heritage Ford and Oh, that's it? Yeah. Which one was the one you bought in Pennsylvania? One of you just bought uh, rescue right, 2 was down. bought in Virginia. Rescue 2. Three. 3. Rescue 2 was bought in New York. Rescue so three. so hold on. There's two ambulances. Rescue yeah, so 3 rescue. and Rescue 4. Got it. Both of them are used. They're not new. Yes. The other truck that we bought most recently that we're paying the loan on is the big truck. I know that truck. Rescue that was 2. out of New York. That's out of New York. Yeah. So Got Rescue it. 2 is the big heavy rescue and Rescue 3 and 4 are the ambulances. The one you bought in Virginia was which one? Rescue 3. Rescue 3. The white okay. one. The one, one that right. Greg went down and drove back. <coughs> right? I know there's one. Yeah. yeah. No, that one was delivered on a flatbed, wasn't it? In the middle of the He went down and tried it out. Oh, Greg oh. and Bruce brought one down. I remember the conversation. Rescue 3. He said it was great. That came on a flatbed. Oh, that did. Because we had the fixed oh, yeah, airbags and everything else. That came in the wintertime on a flatbed. And that was Greg rescued. went down to look at it oh. yeah. to make sure it was worthy, and he waved the drool off his mouth and said it was brand new. So yeah. fine. He'll go look again if you want. Him to that go was ahead. Rescue 3. Yeah. Okay, Rescue 4 is the one you're looking to replace. That's right. And that's a 2012. Chassis. But again, that's the chassis, not right. the working part. So, yeah. you know. Okay, but you put a new motor in the 2012. We have, yes. Jeez. I think it'll make a good farm truck for you. No, it won't. It's, it's, got it's got a brand, brand new motor in it. Forget it. No, no bueno. <laughs> okay. And so also in 2022, uh, engine four, which is uh, 23 years old, will be 25 years old. And we're looking to replace that in 2022. Okay. All right. And all the other numbers are just estimates. So essentially, we estimate that we make $115,000 a year. This year, we made 140. So it changes, but that's just the number that we throw in this plan. Um, yeah. Ambulance expenses. That's the par that's what we do with the paramedic billing, the yeah. billing, etc. That's this year is 25,000. So again, those things are fluctuating, and. Um, so in, in years past, um, and in next year, you've actually asked us to take 18000 out of that for operating expenses. And that's <coughs> figured into this plan as well. So that's how those numbers are all lined up. And any of those things can change. You know, the income can change, the expenses can change, and you can decide that we don't need to take 15000 out of insurance revenue for operations. Or, you know, however we decide what the budget is. But that's that's the basic premise of this plan. Right. But it's actually the 115 is actually 136 or 140. 
We could be. Yeah. I mean, when I did parts. this, we were not making money. No, no, I understand. Right. The, the 89 this year actually is 98. Yeah, 100. 98. Okay. For, two, for two, 2019. Yes. But again, it's, this is a, just a plan. It's not. A, it's not a reflection. I'm just. This, this is what was planned. And if you, I mean, if you go back to the sheet that we show collection rates, it's yeah. all at about 115,000 on average. This year was a particularly you know, busy year. Uh huh. Any other questions on capital? Hearing none. All right. Any questions on the rescue for motor replacement? Did I understand that? Any questions? That happened quite a while ago. We talked about it months ago. When did it happen? It was the fall. Last fall, yeah. Yeah, last fall. Yeah, it was, right. in, it was in FY19, so. Yeah. Well, we've talked about it a couple of times. Well, I guess that just means I've gone to a few meetings. All right. So we can move on Stick from that more. then. Um, schools, we're going to try to do a bus accident training with the school system in August. Bus accident. Yeah, um, following up from the incident we had in Calais last year. Can I stop you? Ty, sure. I'm sorry. Can we back up to the line above that one? <laughs> yeah, to, to, to the actual replacement. Oh, sorry. Uh, replacement. Sorry, I missed the rescue for you. I apologize for that. That's nice. So, rescue for replacement. That's up for FY20. Um, you have some pictures. We have better ones you can pass around. Oh, is that what this picture is? Sorry. Why? It's a Ford. Mm -hmm. so why are we looking at this now? It's a pretty it's, picture. It's on the agenda. You see, it says rescue for replacement. So, but why are we looking at it? Because we have an ambulance replacement that's due for this fiscal year. And the budget in the um, your capital plan is for two hundred and twenty-five thousand for rescue four. For rescue four. So rescue four currently experiences quite a few electrical issues. Um, I mean, just the other day we had to pull it out of service. It was out responding to emergency call. Emergency lights went out. The things that just got repaired. It's just a constant, you know, with the doors and parts. Because of the older box on the chassis. Um, Williston has a truck that's available for us that we've looked at. Um, <clears throat> we feel that it's a, a good truck for replacement wise. It's not our first choice. With, we prefer to replace it with a new truck just for the longevity. I think this truck is 10 years old, um, has about 78,000 miles on it, is in good condition. They've been the single owners of it. And um, they had contacted us with it, and they're asking twenty thousand for it. Um, they probably so see they probably, see, they probably see a lot less back roads than what we do. Is it four wheel drive? Four wheel drive. Is it a diesel? And it's a diesel. Oh, two thousand nine. No, two thousand ten. It's a, it's okay. It's past the series where there's problems with it. It's what? It's past the mark where the Ford had the problems with that new motor. Oh, Ford's had problems. Yeah. It was. It wasn't when they first came out, so it got through the cycle. So well, 2008 is when Ford started making that six motors. four, right? And then so this is the Next newer generation. generation of that six four. Um, Tell me, what was that truck we had a problem with? The, the, the two, motor. the 2012 that we had. That was a, that was a big truck. That wasn't a. That wasn't a Ford. The, the bad engine fire. That wasn't a Ford. Ah. Oh. The truck's in good condition. One of the things, obviously, you know, when we look at trucks like this, what we give up is we give up the safety features for what is built into current and modern ambulances. Um, one of the largest ones is the lift systems that now are in the back of them for the cots and everything. Those systems are about $40,000 to put into them, but they save a lot of back injuries and things for loading and unloading the patients. And as patients tend to be um, changing dynamics. Um, we uh, do you have the lift system? Did in you practice that? We, we do not. No. In any, no, 
not an ambulance or that. We don't. So that's you know, and also there's a lot of um, personal restraint systems in the newer ambulances. There's actually five point harnesses and strap restraints for uh, the paramedics and EMTs in the back of the rigs. For the people riding. Yeah, just for safety because oh, so they don't get thrown around. So they don't get thrown around if it, as much if there's an accident and things. Plus, the mount systems are different. So, in the crash ratings, the new mount systems are rated stronger. Um, there's been known to be failures in the mount systems that we have if they take a hard enough crash. And, uh, not to put Matt on the spot, but Matt can vouch firsthand for having come from Alabama was an ambulance from his department that got sideswiped in an intersection, rolling it over with a patient in the back of it. And so. Okay, so how much is a new ambulance? Just out of curiosity. 225,000. How much is this? 20. 20. 20. Yeah, so, so you. Just curious. They're going to ask for the new one. Yeah, I just. And they're showing this one. Okay. So. No, we're going to buy the used one and save and you 200,000 in the capital fund. That's the plan? That's what we'd like. Talk about not putting things in right. Were we supposed to guess at that? <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, so this is the business about the the um, use of the capital funds, the ambulance revenues. Mm -hmm. This is what gets so confusing, because you do a rundown and it's hard to line them all up. So we've been working on this capital plan. Right. <laughs> well, uh, this opportunity only came up, us to, up to us last month. So. Gotcha. So we're going to spend. Are you saying that you think it's a good idea to put in those um, safety features at forty thousand? In the in the capital plan with the current capital funds we have, it would be hard to fund it. You know, it's projected the most going forward to. But we were estimating that it was going to cost two twenty-five. Now you're saying twenty-five. Twenty. 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 And there's some revision residual value to the existing truck it might not be much but right. yeah it's hard to know how much it's hard one to know. just the cabin like chassis may be worth twenty thousand dollars so the, the so payment, even if it's worth five right if so so the payments that, that are listed here at forty five thousand the town it's we're not gonna have to make those payments correct that's correct so it seems to me that if we're gonna save all that money on a, the ambulance Please remember that this ambulance wasn't in the capital plan when we oh. made our decisions back in December. Okay, now this came out of nowhere, and now apparently may be going back to nowhere. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Is there anything else out there, like out of state, or is this the only game in town? Um, there, there is others out there, not as good of a value as this one is, and how clean this truck is. There was one that just sold at auction for $8,500 in New York State that was unknown fully what the condition was. What year was that? 2008. And this is, is, this a, a, is this a box? Oh, this is not a retention yeah. box. This is no, it's new. it was purchased new. It's a whole brand yeah. new 2010 complete. Oh, sorry. Why does it, it says 2012. That's, That's what our no, current one. Was the current one. Listed. Oh, the, the current one. Listed. The current one. The current cobbled up vehicle is listed as a 2012. Right. Because the chassis is a 2012. The chassis is in good shape, though, right? The 2012. I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, so the, 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 the whole structure now has a brand new motor. Yes. So right. why is it budgeted for forty-five thousand? Because we were planning on buying a new one. Right. And we have this opportunity that came up to us to move ahead and purchase a used ambulance instead of a new one, which is what you've helped us to decide in the past with other vehicles. But what Bruce is saying is that we haven't budgeted for this. Is that what you're saying, Bruce? <laughs> Bruce is saying you didn't know anything about it. No, when we were making the choices back in December right. about how we were going to move forward with the budget, mm -hmm. This wasn't in the capital plan. It came in the capital plan, as you say, we saw it first in April and then okay. we talked about it in May. And now it sounds like they're willing to take it back out of the plan, 
and just make a, a purchase of this ambulance and get X number of years out of a used one again. Right. Well, and, and, so well, and so we would restructure the capital plan to reflect that. Right. We were thinking originally in 2012 was going to last us for a while, I believe. Yeah. I mean, well, I remember we, when the building, the, the body was re rebuilt and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it sounds right. like that didn't work out that well. Correct. Well, we got the one well, from we, got we got a lot of years out of it, but... We've had seven years out of it. Oh, it's been seven? Yeah, 2019. We've been doing this too long. <laughs> you forgot how to count. <laughs> um, so that was... So, who knows? Right. So, so we'd like to move ahead and take <coughs> possession of a $20,000 used ambulance, and then we'll re... re redo the capital plan to reflect that and move on from there. And and as Denise it's may suggest, maybe we do put in the forty thousand dollar cot system into the capital plan and let that you know show up in the plan. It's still less than the two hundred and twenty five thousand that we had had targeted for a replacement ambulance in twenty twenty. <coughs> Maybe you should keep the 2012 the new engine. We can always put the engine that one. <laughs> that, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> really? Is, are like are you way. going to play the game of, of keep both? No. So that you... No. Okay. No. No. So the, the, the existing one is dead. So the 2014 sorry. is going out the door. 2014? I mean, the 2012, sorry. Right. 2012. When do you put the engine in? Right. The realistic vision of that is that the box on that probably goes into the shop once a week for maintenance issues. Yeah, it sounds like that's... It may not always be major <laughs> issues, but it's wiring. Yeah. It's to the point where they're bypassing wiring to make wiring work and things get cut out and stop working altogether at that point. And if it's at the shop, it can't be out in public. Correct. Are you confident that this is a good rig? Yes. We know the people at the Williston Fire Department. I, I know the chief very well, and I know what they do. Is that Bobby? No. No, he's the one who stands behind. We've, we've driven it. We looked at it. It's, it's actually it's immaculate. It's and actually been their reserve ambulance for five years. Uh, I guess I'm they run it they once a week on Sundays. Just to, they have two ambulances. They do. So when they replaced their other one, this one went to the reserve ambulance. So this one hasn't run many calls for five years. I guess I'm uncomfortable making a decision tonight. Well, you don't make a decision tonight. That was our agreement. Right. You'd make it in your own meeting. Right. And we make but this own. is, I presume this is a request for authorization, and we'd have to make it at our next meeting. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Right. And will it hold till then? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, well, there's also going to be the, we're going to need 30 for this total because we have to do lettering, we have to do radios, and then we'll have tires we're going to need for winter on it. So if we're going to do a capital purchase of it, we need to include it all because we have no way to absorb those into our regular operating budget. So put it in an email and yep. send it to us. And okay. Our next meeting is the 19th. Our we'll next be on meeting that is again. Yeah. Come talk to the board about it. And they'll hold it till then. When's your next meeting? Monday. Oh. You have a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you look tired. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting. <laughs> they're waiting for a new ambulance to arrive. Wait, wait, Once their ambulance arrives, right. then they'll be free to go out. When's your ambulance coming? We don't know. They're not certain, 100%, but it should be sometime what, early September. What year is it? 2010. And you call it a rescue, not an ambulance. It's an ambulance. We just name it rescue to replace a rescue. But it's an ambulance. I know that's confusing, but mm -hmm. not that confusing. For us it's how it works. So it's twenty K plus, plus about ten for plus radio ten fit up. For and tires. 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 Radio. And I guess you guys need to talk about the the safety. The safety package. Package for the forty grand to put in the back of it. That's like something you're gonna support or not. And there's someone, some business locally that would do that? Uh, we'd probably have to have it sent out to an ambulance company to do it. Like safety? What do you guys think there? about no. the safety company? That was a joke. You gonna it might be a little joke. <laughs> I have no idea. You don't have to be the chair. Are you going to put it on the agenda? 
Kita boleh ni kan? It doesn't have to be done right now anyway. Well, how soon do you need an answer, guys? On the safety thing? No, on the, the package. The package, isn't it? it wouldn't it? You're going to send it to an ambulance place to be oh, tires yeah. and all that stuff. No, that will all be here. Yeah, yeah, that's not. That will be here. That's a separate item. Okay, the safety package. You'd send it someplace. Right. So I will revise the capital plan and send it to you as long as well as with the request for the purchase of the twenty thousand dollar ambulance with ten thousand dollars worth of <coughs> setup. Okay. We done with that item? Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Talk about school bus accident trains. Not much talk on that. A couple of things going on for us. Can um, I go back to the school bus thing? Yes. So you're going to be meeting with the school bus company. Yes. One of the biggest issues with that whole incident last winter was the tires on the buses. John Brabant was there and looked <coughs> at the tires. I don't know. That's not. That, that's not going to be part that of your training. So. Are you, our issue is strictly with policy and procedure for emergency incidents and how we safely treat and transport children and the school bus driver. Did you have to do that last? We did. So. Um, okay, so used auto pulse. An auto pulse is a automatic defibrillator. It's a compression device used for CPR. Um, we had purchased that from Williston this last year. They have, they have again, we have contacts inside up there that when they're getting rid of some of the equipment. So we bought a used one for them for uh, $3,500. New, they run 10, 11 grand, um, maybe a little more. And then we've just put some new batteries in order. But that's something we would use in you know, cardiac arrest situations. And it frees up personnel because the machine's doing all the work at that point. It's got specialized bands that go over the chest and then it automatic decompresses the chest. So you bought that? Or you we did. Yeah. Oh, you did. So we have, we have one. Ultimately, in the long run, we'll try to obtain two, but we have one. Um, the R2 loan, just kind of the update on that, we're, we finished our second year, and we're into the third year of that. Uh, exterior painting of Station 1, uh, which is Templeton Road. We're looking to do some exterior painting up there. Um, there is some peeling paint on the trim work and things and different parts of it and then the building, that door, the <coughs> big door has the gray paint that was partially painted on there from the community group from a few years ago. Looking to get that, get rid of that, paint that back so it's white. Um, any questions on that, on the painting at all? Um, well, this said both stations. One and two. So two, we don't have a, we're looking at what we feel we should be doing down here and we're looking to get prices on this is that we should start painting probably a side of the building a year and do it in a four year rotation. So I don't have the complete information on that to give you what the costs are on that, but that's what we're looking to do before we get to a point where we have to start scraping, repairing the paint and things like that. Um, the cement board, is notorious for once it starts to break down and gets water run on it, it will deteriorate if you don't keep the paint up on it there. So we want to keep up with that while it's in good shape overall. We did some minor roof repairs up on the rubber roof. There were some seams that were uh, loosened up and everything. So we did some patch repairs to that like a couple months ago, a month and a half ago. <coughs> it hadn't started to leak. It wasn't leaking. No, no, no. it was lifting. Yeah. Yeah. No leaks. So just regular maintenance things, just trying to keep out of them. Um, some of the drills we've done, we did a major propane drill over at Alco this last week. We did a yeah, large there? drill Al Alco Energy over here in East Voltaire. There's a propane facility, storage facility in oh, right. Heating Oil. Just down so down we did some. Live burn, propane burning over there. 
spent a couple hours with him. Um, we did a large volume water supply drill out in uh, Curtis Ponds, out there with the engines and the, the big guns, flowing about a couple thousand gallons a minute through the gun company there. And then we also just completed a, a major driver training event. We did several classroom here ahead of time, and then we went to um, Huntington Homes, set up a course over there with cones, and then got our drivers qualified through a cone. Um, there's a whole course that you have to go through with different lane sizes on the cone, slalom course forward and backwards, turning around, um, parallel parking, 40-foot so fire truck. Uh, hose testing, ladder testing, we just completed those. Everything passed, we lost one, one length of hose, so that's good. Um, we are in the process of working to obtain a new AED for the Senior Center. They've recently completed a um, CPR class and things, and they're looking to put an AED into the Senior Center over there. Twin Valley? Yeah, Twin Valley. We've gone there in the last few months. We've been there for uh, several cardiac issues and things. So they're working hard to keep themselves prepared and ready to go. And they've got a group of people, automatic external defibrillator. So instead of the big monitors, we have the little packs like you see in the school systems. Um, mount, we'd have a box of mounts on the wall and then the units inside there has a couple of pads on it that they can just easily apply. And then it's basically an automated system. Once they push it, it has audible prompts to it. As I say, so those are the ones that. And what's that do? Right? Help breathe or how no, do you? No, it shock. It was shock. Oh, it's shock. Oh, it's yeah. shock. Yeah. To get your heart going. Yeah. yeah. If you need yeah. that. No kidding. Huh. So, it was shock the same as our big one. It just doesn't have the same monitoring capabilities. But it'll, it'll walk them through when to breathe, when to you know compressions and things. So it's something it's, it's on the wall. Can, yeah. Can you grab the unit? So, so they make boxes now. Um, Larry, there's um, one right on the back there. You can show them from the far end of that table. Oh, there's one right there. You see one at the schools. Like U32 has one that hangs right by the, the gymnasium end. There's a white box on the wall. It's probably 18 inches yeah. wide. It's an two foot tall. Yeah, and it has yeah. a closed box on them. Some of the buildings with alarm systems have automatic alarms. So as soon as somebody opens that box, we actually get notified that the box was opened. Um, and so, but these units just sit inside there and they, you know, teach the lay people to use these. They're pretty uh, self-sufficient. There's just a couple of buttons to push and a couple of pads to put on. And so is, there much of a, is there a battery or just plug Batteries, in? yeah, battery. lithium ion batteries. And, uh, How much do they cost? Um, they're about $1,600 with the wall box. Connect. Where do you put the lights on? pull off the wall. There's two of them, we've got a picture on it. And we start on these, one on your shoulder, one on your side. And then what it's, it would do is it'll tell you what to do after you connect it. It won't start up now. You press analyze, and it'll analyze your heart rhythm. No heart rhythm or a rhythm bit. Connect electron. I have to connect these. And then if it says shock, you push the button, and you deliver 260 joules or more of energy. Does it, does it, uh, does it do it automatically how much it thinks you need? It's, it's preset, yeah. either 260 or 320. So these would be set up, they're in schools, they're in gymnasiums. And you guys should look at some of the different types. types. They can't use them yeah. very much in schools, though. I wouldn't oh, think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We've, we've gone to many they're schools. They're in malls, they're yeah. everything, they're all really? in the public places. <laughs> yeah. Airports. <coughs> so they have them in grocery stores. They're on farms. They're on my farm. Fire extinguishers. So what's the other, that, what was that other thing you had? They're both the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. can come different ways. We should have one of the cameras on. Yeah, you should. You have them in uh, grocery stores. They have they them do. in uh, many, many places. Like if you go to a hospital, they have them maybe modeling at Dartmouth. As soon as you remove them from the container, from the wall, an alarm sounds. And they know the monitor has been activated. Hmm. So they get their team running. But Small thing. We do carry them on the fire trucks along with the ambulance, which has the big monitor. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so they have them up here at Twin Valley. 
No, they, they don't have it. They don't. We're going to get one for them and put it into there. They're, they're for visitors. They, so. they have yeah. quite a few programs going on. Like I said, they've been working. They just did the CPR class and have been 15 people get CPR certified and everything. So Nice. Yeah. Well, the auto pump's not set up yet. Uh, what's that? Show the auto pump. I mean, if they want to see it, we can. You guys want to see the auto pump and how it works? This is yeah. something that yeah. in oh, studies where if I was to start CPR on you right now and do it at high performance, the survival rate is 30%. If I take the auto pulse, put the auto pulse on you, the survival rate is 71%. Which would you want? Uh, it depends on the stage of life. I'll show you. Well, while you guys have your meeting, I'll set the auto pulse up on back. <laughs> The auto pulse has gotten so good. It does. The auto pulse has gotten so good at what it does. Medicines had to come up with protocols to sedate people, really, because they regain consciousness while it's doing CPR. Hmm. Calm down. Huh. Uh, the last thing under EMFD is the measles, mumps, rubella. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. The what? Measles, mumps, mumps rubella. rubella. Yep. Yeah. The three prong shot. That's coming back around. Uh, you may have heard it on the news. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then hepatitis A. And then <coughs> compressing. So I have to do this at the rate of 120 times a minute. Whereas I can take this device, place the life band on. If you're in the back of the ambulance trying to do this, and you have no safety harness on, you're just getting thrown <coughs> over the place. <coughs> Takes us a minute to put it on. So if we have to transport you now while this is going in the ambulance, we use a special, uh, it's called a mega mover. This is a device with six handles. We place it right underneath you, underneath this board. We can pick you right up. This is still running like this. It never stops. All the way to the hospital. Continue with CPR. And it has to put a collar on so that it would be the state there. Manual. Manual compressions. So manual compressions, all of us on East Montpelier have gone through a rigorous course with an instructor from the hospital, a paramedic instructor, on how to do the high performance CPR. We do a thing called pit stop, like you see the race car drivers, one does this, that, and everything else. The team, if we have four or five people, are all designated. I might be administering drugs through a, I've started an IV, but instead of starting an IV in your arms, we find a spot on the side of your leg. We have an IO drill. They drill right into your bone, it just takes a second. And they actually do this on people, like if we're sitting here tonight, and I said to you, I'm gonna put a 15 gauge or a 14 gauge needle in your arm. It hurts more there than if I drill it in your knee. Because well, there's so no, no nerves in your knee. Well, if you're, you're unconscious, unresponsive, not breathing, no heartbeat, you don't feel it. Right. But if you can go online and watch interosseous IO drilling, and they do it, <laughs> they do it don't, for patients. Don't, don't go watch it right now. Yeah, they do it at the hospital right now. If they can't find an IV access, they just drill very, very painlessly. They, we, we do them in the shoulder through the humerus or we do them in the knee, just below the inside of your tip fib area there. One of the beneficial things with an auto pulse is the, the initiative right now, if you're, if you're having what's called a STEMI or a ST elevation myocardial infarction, particular kind of heart attack. How do you know? Um, the, well, yeah. we, they could tell by we, the rhythm. We run an EKG on you and we can, the, the computer will tell you sometimes, sometimes we have to be smarter than the, than the video game. But um, the, the definitive care for that is either UVM or DARPA. And that can, be, that can be a ride, especially in February. So for us to go there, we wouldn't want to undertake that without having one of these. Because if you do go into cardiac arrest, there's only usually one of us in the back of the truck mm -hmm. uh, on those trips. So that, that's a benefit here is we can get you to that definitive care. I know Chief and I have done a couple of those runs. Um, I think uh, Sandy and I did one where we, we 
it's, it's not a knock against CVH, they're just, they don't have a cath lab. And that's where you need to be for definitive cardiac care. So we can go straight, we can go mm -hmm. take you straight into cardiac catheterization right out of the ambulance. So does this work? Is it successful? I was on Mary City for 20 years. Matt was on Mary City. How many did you see Matt saves with this? Well, it's it, not only the saves, but like I was mentioning earlier, just the fact that people in cardiac arrest will regain consciousness. And that's not just a anecdotal thing. There's uh, uh, National Institutes of Health have research papers written on, on that about you know how effective they are. Well, that means the blood, blood is getting to your brain yeah. better if you're gaining consciousness. If so you, you take have less. If you've taken CPR over the course of, of several years, I think this is my 26th year at it, um, in in licensed EMS. You know they they change things almost every five years. ILCOR comes out with new recommendations. Right. Remember back when you would give five compressions to two breaths. And what they've learned is that it takes uh, 10 to 13 compressions to prime the system, just like priming a well pump. It takes so many compressions to prime the system to get blood moving. So that's why now in manual CPR, we're up to 30 compressions before you stop to give a breath. And with the new pit crew CPR, you only stop momentarily. I mean, this uh, one. To, no, to give a breath. Everybody has everybody has everybody has everybody has the pit crew. Uninterrupted, uninterrupted compressions. And that's, and that's the goal, is to get to that uninterrupted compressions because you do get mm -hmm. better performance out of the body. You know, CPR in the best, in the best of cases is marginally effective as far as restoring blood flow where your heart would be. And you know, it's really, you, you really can't do it safely going down the road in the truck either. Um, oh, that's you know. really hard. You've got to stand up in the ambulance and you have no place, you lock your feet into the cot and you're over the patient and it goes around the corner, you're going forward and back. So this device allows me to be strapped in the seat. Mm -hmm. I can do my stuff on this side. Matt would do his stuff on the head and the other side or whoever's on the ambulance at the time. So this device here, they're about ten or twelve thousand dollars new, and we were able to purchase this one for thirty-five hundred. So we feel that this used in the towns of East Montpelier, Callis, Plainfield, Marshall, mm -hmm. where we're covering, because we have such a long run time to get to any of these people, this gives them the best opportunity. So I've seen people that have, that had a flat line on the monitor, no breathing, no palpable pulse. This is put on them, the drugs are administered, all of a sudden after the shock is delivered, and this is working, it shows a heartbeat. So you've used this already? We haven't used it on a patient here in town. I've used it many, many times, and I worked on Berry City for 20 plus years. And I've had people actually come back to the fire station weeks later that were clinically dead, no heartbeat, no pulse, no respirations, come back in and thank us for saving their lives. Oh. This device here works. There's a big study now on the West Coast where a fire department out there was saving about 20% of the people they went to, full-time paramedic firefighters. <coughs> they put this device on, and over the course of the next year, of the cardiac arrest they went to, 71% were saved. Mm -hmm. Go back to functional life, no mm -hmm. de deficits, everything else going on. So that's where we're investing in people. So how many pounds a person can that? A three or 400 pounder, depending on their chest size. It'll take up to like 54, 58 inches. It doesn't look inches. like it would be that big. Everybody sitting at the table here, anybody, this would adequately take care of. And I've gone to some patients that have been in the four, 500 pound range. And if they fit on the board, if this fits on, on their chest expansion, because when I turn this on, and when I push the button, it sizes them right away. It's either gonna work, or it'll say, unable to perform CPR. We have a head block that holds the head in position so it doesn't bounce with the mannequin. And then we just continue. We just pick them up. We're going to go with the patient. And we take the patient right into the ambulance. And it continues all the way to the hospital. We have extra batteries. The batteries are about $800 a piece. Well, you don't want those batteries in there. That's cool. We, we just bought three new ones. We bought three new ones because the um, 
what Zoll, who makes the machine, says you need to have a three uh, waste just not a rotation. We have one in, one in the bag, one in the charger. Every morning, one in the charger goes out, one in the bag goes in, one in the machine comes out. So we're 100% fresh. So we have at least 60 minutes of time to work at, at home. With this device on, they say the hospital and the guidelines are for 30 minutes of continuous CPR, drug intervention, cardiac compression, this here, and all of this, the shock and everything else. We have a protocol that we follow very extensively. If we can't resuscitate you at that point, we call it right there. We're talking with the doctor, and the, the medics can deliver everything. The hospital can deliver, the medics can deliver. And the advanced AMTs are delivering the epinephrine 1 to 10,000, which is the stimulator, which we had a case in Calus, um, cardiac arrest. We did manual CPR. We happened to have a good crew of people there administering the drugs. Medics showed up. We were doing our stuff, manual CPR, and flat line, all of a sudden, their heartbeat started. Wow. And the drug therapy and everything else. We got the patient loaded, brought her to the hospital. She did die a day later. But that was a flat line monitor, recorded, actual cardiac arrest, no pulse, no breathing, no respiration, nothing. Drug therapy, compressions by hand, uh, and in one shock we delivered, started her back up. So this device here gives us a better fighting chance for everybody that we go to. It helps us a lot. This band here is $275 a piece. So this is expensive medical equipment. The newer ones that come out now, this will have adapters to it. We can plug our monitor into it, and then it will deliver the shock. It'll, it'll say if the monitor the pads are on, it'll automatically detect when the shock is going to be delivered, and it'll start the monitor and fire the shock directly in. Oh. So it's a complete cardiac care unit. Amazing. Cool. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Does anyone make a motion to adjourn? Second. Got that, Katie? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank